We'll begin. Welcome everyone to the planning board meeting of the planning board of the town of Smithtown. Before we begin with our agenda, please join us in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The chair recognizes Planner Matthew Collado for the items recommended for adjournment this evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Planning Board. The Planning Department would like to recommend the following items be recessed because the applicants are not ready to be heard at this time. <clears throat> Under zoning petitions, number one, 2012-04, Storybook Homes, that's Consett. Number two, 2012-02, Carlson Associates, Kings Park. Number three, 2010-06, KBC Holdings. Under waiver requests, number four, 773, Scholar States Comac, number five, number 1135, Tuami Platt, St. James, and number six, 911A, a, Glen Hill Northern, St. James. Is there anyone present who wishes to be heard on any of the matters recommended uh, to be recessed? Sir, please come forward and state your name and which item on the agenda. My name is Robert Soto. I live at 59 Jeremy Circle in Esconset. Item number one, Storybook Homes in Esconset. This is dated June 2012. That's correct. Why is this still on here? Why does it recur? This is a matter that is uh, not the one in this concept, but I believe is in uh, off of Lake Avenue in St. James. Uh, Mr. Flynn, our planning director, could uh, give you a brief synopsis of what uh, this proposal entails. Um, this one is on Lake Avenue, but it's in this concept. Um, Pretty, okay. pretty close uh, to the fire department uh, substation. Um, they're building in the back uh, there. The, um, this is before I went to planning board meetings on a regular basis. I wasn't at the hearing. But this is a petition to the town board to change the zone um, to permit garden apartments <coughs> instead of uh, okay. single family homes and uh, perhaps offices. The, under the zoning ordinance, uh, there's a procedure that before the town board can change the zoning, they have to get a recommendation from the planning board. And the planning board held a hearing on this petition. And it's my understanding that there was a lot of opposition. The planning board, um, from my understanding, is said that they wanted to adjourn it and I believe directed the previous uh, planning director to either meet with the residents um, or with the developer. I'm not sure which. But uh, after when he retired, when the, that director retired and before I became the director, he briefed me on the status of everything. And I believe he said this was sort of in the dead letter file. Uh, so I'm not sure, you know, yeah, the, the applicant is it. not. But with this is very this. this is very unsettling. This keeps popping up, and he said there was no meeting. So maybe we should have a meeting and find out what we're going to do with this. It was my intention to clean up some of these items that have been on the agenda for a long time. Uh, we have addressed several of these, and I would assume you know this is probably one that uh, meets that criteria. We should find out from the applicant what their intentions are, uh, if they wish to proceed. But there is nothing we can't force them. Uh, to go ahead on this. The only thing we could probably do is hold a public hearing and, and vote on the matter. But again, the applicant may decide to withdraw or uh, change the nature of the application. So it, the ball is really in their court. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard on any of the matters recommended for adjournment? Can I just ask a question? Uh, yes, just but you have to please come forward and yeah. state your name. And which item on this? Uh, the first one again. First. Yeah, my first name one. is Peter Hansen. I live at 47 Empress Pines Drive in Nesconset. Real fast, the uh, number of apartments is how many on that? This first item. Well, He's requesting. I, from my, what memory serves me, reading this uh, over a few years ago, it, it is not an exorbitant amount because of the, uh, the the size of the parcel involved. But Mr. Flynn, do you can you recollect? I, I wasn't a party to this. 
Uh, I'm not sure. This is a matter that precedes my time, uh, my, my tenure on the board, so I'm not familiar, but it, it is something that, as you say, has appeared on the agenda since that time. Well, the, the number would be in uh, the number of apartments that what that would refer to this would be very important. I mean, the, the, the traffic, Lake Avenue, Smithtown Boulevard, is already rated an F. Can't be worse. So uh, anything I, I understand your concerns, and, and I think the, the fact that probably this has languished on the agenda um, demonstrates maybe it doesn't have the public support or the, it's not feasible. So again, I, again, I can't prejudge this, but I, I know it is something that maybe we should contact the uh, applicant and, and see what their intentions are. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions on the matters recommended for adjournment? If there being none, do I have a motion to adjourn these items? Motion to recess items one through six as read. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The matters are recessed. Uh, next item on the agenda is under new hearings and decisions, the extension of preliminary approval for Richwood Estates in Hopog. The applicant requests an extension of conditional preliminary approval for the subdivision known as number 1057.1 map of Richwood Estates. The preliminary map of number 1057.1 map of Richwood Estates was granted preliminary approval by the Planning Board on November 18th, 2015. The preliminary approval is valid for a period of 180 days that expired on May 18th, 2016. Since that date, this application has received two 90-day extensions and two six-month extensions, which expired on November 18th, 2017. The applicant submitted the request for, an ex for the extension on November 13th, 2017. The applicant states that they have yet to obtain a road opening permit from the town of Islip and have accepted an offer from Suffolk County to purchase the property for open space. The planning department has reviewed the request and has no objection to an extension and recommends a time period of six months. The planning department offers the following resolution for the board's consideration. Planning board resolution number blank 2017, extension of conditional preliminary approval for number 1057.1 map of Richwood Estates. Whereas the planning board has considered the request to extend the conditional preliminary approval for number 1057.1 map of Richwood Estates. Now therefore be it first resolved that the planning board hereby grants a retroactive six month extension of time to the conditional preliminary approval for the subdivision known as number 1057.1 map of Richwood Estates beginning November 18th, 2017 to May 18th, 2018. Okay, thank you. Yulia Viola for the applicant, Sir Tillman Ballon, 100 Motor Parkway, Hapag, New York, 11788. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. Do you uh, have the affidavit of posting? Yes, I do. Along with the pictures. Could you just spell your name for the uh, stenographer? Sure, it's Y-U-L-I-Y-A. And the last name is Vilak Victor I O L A. Thank you. As you may recall, on November 18, 2015, the Planning Board adopted resolution granting a conditional preliminary map approval for the subdivision known as a map of Richwood Estates. At this time, we are requesting an extension of that approval due, due to the fact that we are currently waiting for the legislative approval of the contract of sale between the Suffolk County and the purchaser for the subject property. And we are hoping that we should be able to get this approval soon so that the county and the purchaser can move forward with the contract and close on the property. Okay, you've heard the report of the planning department and I gather you are in agreement? Yes, we're in okay. agreement with the staff's recommendation. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Any members of the public wish to be heard on this matter? Sir, please come forward and give your name and address for the record, please. My name is Edward Sanders. I live at 370 Ridgefield Road in Hopog. I'm right up the block from the house that uh, Mr. Nealon purchased that they were looking to initially knock down to put in the property. So it's our understand. I'm here on the behalf of the Northwood Northfield uh, Wood Civic Association. So it's our understanding that the purchase is pretty much trying to go through with the Suffolk County to purchase the property. So I know that Smithtown Township still had never given the approval, and what we're trying to find out is because we're getting mixed between the town of Smithtown and the town of Islip about the approvals that the town of Smithtown is going to give 
or rather the town of Islip is still that's still trying to get the permit to knock the house down and put the road through and that Suffolk County is only going to approve to purchase the property if they get the approval to put the roadway in so that's what we're kind of confused about why are they still pushing to get the roadway put in if the county is going to buy it they don't need another road to get in they can get in off of Vets highway and it's well, going to be park property the road so that's where the confusion it, is the road part of it is with the town of Islip if I recall correctly right. this is one of those properties that was in both towns and the part dealing with the road, they had to go to the town of Islip to get the road opening permit. We gave a, uh, I think it was a uh, preliminary approval. And as she just indicated, apparently the, the applicant is in contract with the right. county and the county legislature has to approve it. But anything relating to the road opening permit is with the town of Islip and that's not really us. Right, okay. And there's another very serious problem, which I was gonna call Mr. Neely because I know who he is. Um, there's a lot of illegal hunting going on in that property right now, and if you could just request of uh, Mr. Nealon to just see if he can have somebody post the property, because we're calling the police now, because there, there's about 17 deer that live in the area there. People are actively shooting with guns back there. Now it's between park property and it's between town property and so forth. So um, is there any way that the town can also go in there and post the property so there's no hunting? Because when the police are coming in, they can't arrest anybody because they don't know who owns the property, and someone's going to get killed. Well, I don't think we're allowed, the town's allowed just to go on private property. Well, no, I, I'm just asking them for you guys to go onto the property that belongs to you. But I think I think if you call the police, that's you've done the right thing because <clears throat> those are the people who can, you know. But the thing you. is, like, we asked them, if you come in, can you arrest these people? And they said, well, we don't know who owns the property. I said, but they're still discharging a weapon within a 1,000 feet of a domicile, yeah. which is illegal. And they keep telling us that, well, if the person runs onto the other property, we can't go in without a warrant. So that's why I'm just asking if there's any way, because the town of Smithtown already owns the property behind the bank that goes across from the condos that's on on. Uh, yeah, but we don't. The, the town doesn't own this property. The applicant owns it, and right. they're trying to sell right. it to Suffolk County. Right. I know that. Well, if that happens, then they will, the police will know who owns it. Yeah. All right. Suggestion one: uh, either I could do it for you, or call the town parks department and see if they can. They'll probably check with the town attorney's office. Okay. To see if uh, they're allowed to. Because, like I said, because there's five uh, different uh, states in well, there. Maybe five they, different if they could get the maybe they could contact the applicant and get permission from the applicant to go do it and then go do it. Yeah. Okay. That would help the the problem. Yeah. Well, the only part I'm asking you folks to try to do is Suff Smithtown owns the land that comes out next to those five houses across from the Lakes and Honey Hollow, the condos, and that land goes across and it goes behind the bank of Smith uh, the the bank on the corner there right. and that place that has the plumbing supply. So that's the only thing where I'm asking of Town of Smithtown is could we just post in there because it is park property, that it is park property because there used to be signs there and they're gone. So can we just get that posted? This is no hunting. So at least when we call the police, they come over, they say, oh, you're on park property, we're going to arrest you. That's all we're asking. Okay. I, I will ask the parks director if uh, he could post the town park. That would be great. That we can take care yeah. of if, if, the, if they'll do it because it's that's town property. But the other property is private property. Right, right. We we're, yeah. do that like with I said, I was going to call Rick and ask him to post his. Right. And the other part that was sold so maybe to the Maybe working county together will solve the branch, it. right. We're just trying to stop them something before something real bad happens. Thank you. Yes, and uh, we will definitely address the issue with the property owner of illegal hunting and we'll take some steps to remediate the problem. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. The owner's not causing the problem. Just, you know, we understand. We're all just looking out. Anyone else wish to be heard on this? If not, is there a motion to close the public hearing? In the matter of number 1057, decimal one, map of Bridgewood Estates, I move that we close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. The public hearing is closed and on the resolution itself. In the matter of number 1057.1, map of Richwood Estates, I move that we adopt the resolution as read in accordance with the recommendation of the Planning Department. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. The resolution is adopted and the extension of condition of preliminary approval is granted. Uh, Next item on the agenda is Country Point Woods at Smithtown. It's a con another condition of a final approval. Um, for this matter, um, the sign had the wrong date on it, um, so it needs to be re-advertised for the January meeting. All right. So we have a motion to... January 10th. January... January 10th. Yes. Whatever. January 10th? Yep. Yes. Um, Recess to January 10th. Oh, 
Okay. In the matter of uh, number 1167, map of Country Point Woods at Smithtown, I move that we recess this matter to the January 10th, 2018 <coughs> meeting of this board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. The hearing is recessed. The next item on the agenda is a performance bond extension for Richard's Homes on Cambon Avenue in St. James. The request is to retroactively extend the performance period of the performance bond for the subdivision known as number 1120 map of Richard's Homes for a period of two years to expire on January 22nd, 2019. The applicant received conditional final approval for this two lot subdivision from the planning board on November 5th, 2008. 2008. <clears throat> a performance bond estimate in the amount of $22,925 was approved by the board and subsequently signed by the chairman. The town board accepted the bond on January 22, 2009. The approved performance period of the performance bond expired on January 22, 2017. The applicant has indicated that they need more time in order to complete the necessary improvements on the bond. One house has been completed and the second house is under construction. The engineering and highway departments have no objection to the request. The traffic safety department has no comment. The planning department has no objection to the request. The planning department offers the following resolution for the board's consideration. Planning board resolution number blank 2017, extension of performance period of the performance bond, number 1120, map of Richard's homes. Whereas the planning board has considered the request of the Canio Management Corp to retroactively extend the performance period of the performance bond for number 1120, map of Richard's homes for a period of two years. Now, therefore, be it first resolved that the planning board hereby approves a retroactive extension of the performance period of the performance bond for the subdivision known as number 1120 map of Richard Holmes for a period of two years to expire on January 22nd, 2019. Okay, is the applicant or his representative present? No. Um, anybody on the from the public wish to be heard on this matter. There being none, I guess we can extend the performance bond. That's not a major issue. I don't see any reason why we I spoke to him on the phone today. I don't, I don't know why he's not here. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see any reason why we just couldn't go ahead and extend it. Yeah. Okay, do we have a motion mm -hmm. to close the hearing and adopt? In the matter of number 1120, map of Richard's homes, I move that we close the public well, hearing. Well, the affidavit of posting wasn't submitted, actually, so. Ah, then we cannot do that then <coughs> okay you withdraw your motion yeah, and uh, we have a motion to recess mm -hmm. until january 10. Mm -hmm. in the matter of number 1120 map of richard's homes i move that we recess <coughs> the public hearing to the january 10th 2018 meeting of the planning board second all those in favor aye, aye. aye. motion carries the item is recessed till january 10th i guess the same for the next yep Archer Hills, uh, council no. has been. No, see, uh, the oh, waiver Richard. request. Oh, the waiver. Well, I, dr I would address Archer Hills first. Um, For Archer Hills, we have a letter requesting adjournment until January. Or did they give us a, did they not give us a date certain? Um, was there anything in that letter that was sent? No, it just says January. It just says January, so I would assume then it would be, uh, January 10th. The person who wrote the letter is here, so maybe you could ask him. <laughs> we certainly can. Okay, motion to recess till January 10th uh, okay. for Archer Hills. For Archer Hills? Okay. That's not the next one. Number 10. Number 10. Okay. Um, in the matter of number 299, uh, Archer Hills in Smithtown, um, I move that we recess the public hearing to the January 10th. 2018 meeting of the planning board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The item is recessed until January 10th. Next item on the agenda is the companion resolution for Richard's Homes in St. James, uh, waiving of sidewalks. Mm -hmm. uh, there being no affidavit of posting, <coughs> we, we have nothing on that, so I would assume recessing is appropriate. In the matter of number 1120, map of Richard's Homes, I move that we close the, the um, that we recess the public hearing to the January 10th, 2018 meeting of the Planning Board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The item is recessed till January 10th. Next item on the agenda is Laura Park in Wisconsin, and we have a letter which came 
in uh, within the last few days requesting adjournment as council is since he's not available to be present here this evening. Um, I we we do have folks in the audience. Does anybody wish to be heard on this matter since you have came forward? James Buchlis, B O U K L A S. 66 Nichols Road in Wisconsin, New York. Good evening. I'm here representing Wisconsin Civic Association. I'm personally unfamiliar with the Laura Park project. Could you please describe it for those of us in attendance? Pardon me? Could you please describe the project? Uh, you, you said you were, were I'm familiar I'm or were not? I'm not. not. Yes. Oh, I thought you said you were. I'm sorry. Do <laughs> uh, you have the... Yeah, so there's a subdivision um, that had two conditions on it. It's a Lower um, court in this concert. Let me just pull the map out. And there are two conditions placed on the filed map and uh, filed covenants and restrictions that limited the access to one of the lots to Southern Boulevard only. That is lot number three. Um, the most southern one. They uh, were limited access to Southern Boulevard only, not lower court. Um, the second one was putting a fence. They could put not put a fence. Um, I believe the wording is not west of a line 220 feet from the front yard uh, property line along Southern Boulevard. So they placed a fence within that area and they have a curb cut on lower court. So the applicant submitted a waiver looking to waive those two conditions. Um, however, there was a clause that said that you need consent from the neighbors within that subdivision and the planning board, and they have not obtained consent from the neighbors. So that's why we're here. Are you an attorney, sir? I am. Okay, yeah. so you're representing a group of homeowners or an association. I'm just going to make a suggestion. I it's up to you. You can contact the planning department staff, and then you can go through the entire application in detail, read the memos, and really bring yourself up to speed in much more detail than we can give you at this meeting. Absolutely. I saw it on the agenda tonight. I thought perhaps someone else in the Civic Association is aware, and because they weren't, I figured that I would ask the question. No, that's fine, but I, just so you know, there's a request by, in writing by the attorney for the applicant to adjourn the matter. So if that request is granted and he's not here, he wrote a letter nothing substantive is going to happen tonight so you would have time to bring yourself up to speed on it thank you and just a procedural point it's the first time i've ever been here and i appreciate the opportunity to to make a comment well we have an opportunity uh to address other issues not on the agenda or to ask the items be placed on the agenda at some point well if there's an item on the agenda you're certainly welcome to comment upon that uh at that time however unlike the town board we don't have a public portion where people can come up and and speak on any matter okay so thank you you're welcome and if you'd like to address this please come forward you have to oh i'm sorry donna minet laura park um minet donna minet i know last time we can met you give you your address oh 21 laura court in Wisconsin, new york thank you i know last time we met you said that there would no longer be any adjournments and that this would be resolved today. I'm really hoping that we can get this done today. We've made another, we met with um, Mr. Zolo again yesterday, and we told him, we put in writing that he can keep the fence where it is, but the curb cut and the driveway have to go. There's nothing else to discuss at this point. There really isn't. The covenant restrictions should be enforced, and I'm hoping you do that tonight. Unfortunately, as a courtesy, uh, we normally, when someone asks for a matter to be recessed, I had hoped that we would conclude this matter yeah. this evening, and, and I was a little bit concerned when I, when I saw the letter requesting another, yet another adjournment. Yeah, but I, I would like to uh, let the planning staff notify the applicant and Mr. Zolo that this will be the final adjournment if it is granted. And so. if <laughs> Mr. Zolo is unable to appear or he should perhaps find co-counsel or whatever to represent uh, the applicant on this matter. Okay. I think that's fair. That way he's on notice. Everybody's yes. on notice okay. that if something comes up, he has to make arrangements to get someone else here or take someone else to cover what else he has. Okay. 
Fair enough. Again, my apologies for this. Uh, okay. I, I share your concerns, and I was hoping we could conclude this matter. Yeah, this I was evening. hoping. <laughs> okay. I, I think uh, he did make an effort on, uh, there was an effort was made on his part to uh, me. contact and, and get, <laughs> obtain agreement. I don't see that has happened. So I think we have to, you know, okay. vote on this. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's well, proceed. We what we have yeah. Here. Let's. Uh, oh. My name is Fred Glock. G L O C K. Uh, what, wait, what are you here for? Uh, same, same one. Same the same one. one. Okay. Yeah. Fred Glock. G L O C K. Mm -hmm. Nineteen Laura Court in his concert. Uh, known as Lot 5 of Laura Park. I'm the homeowner. Uh, January. Excuse me, excuse me one second. We have an interruption here. Okay. okay. Continue. Uh, come January, we have a new town supervisor. I just have a question to ask as far as the board members. Um, are we going to have new board members on the board, or are all the members going to remain the same? That you would have to uh, ask members of the town board they by state law they they appoint members of the planning board and i don't have a crystal ball i can't tell you what what's in store for anyone so you best uh proceed by well, asking them we can give you so what the procedure is there are five members on this board each member has a five-year term each person's term expires in one year so in january the term of one of the members of the board will expire Okay. And then it'll be up to the town board as to whether to reappoint that particular member whose term expires or uh, appoint someone else in that person's place. That would be in January they can make that decision. If they don't make the decision right away, the person remains on the board as what they call a holdover. But So each year there's one person that can change. So you'll have four of us here okay. in January. So you're stuck with at least four of us. <laughs> uh, that's good, because come January, I don't want to be facing a new board. No, it doesn't work no, that way. And then yeah, go through do everything that, that, that I way. already submitted. With, we're, we, got, we have five of us. We each have a five-year term. It's, each person expires one year, so there's only one potential okay. change each year. It could be the same five of us, okay. or it could be four of us. Uh, it's up I, to the town board, though, not us. Can I just add more information to... Uh, of course. Yes, please do. I have uh, paperwork on a decrease of our property values that I'd like to present. Okay. There's several copies there. Okay. Is there enough I want to give to the planning staff, too? There you go. Keep the filming I can show it. Yeah, exactly. We'll get to the first half of that. Hang on, let's go. Mm -hmm. I can share a call if I have one. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Okay, last year, last year the property at 20 Laura Court, known as Lot 5 of Laura Park, was placed on the market, the real estate market, on April 11th of 2016. And that was prior to any work being done at Laura Court. Okay, the listing price was $624,000 and 590. The house recently sold on, I believe it was August 18th of this year, and it sold for $540,000, okay? Uh, the prior sale of that house was October 2nd of 2006. The sale of that house at that time was $570,000. That's a $30,000 decrease in property value. So it's a $30,000 loss, plus not taken into account for the market appreciation of that property. So the loss of that property is well in excess of $30,000 because of the, uh, the work that Mr. Barnett did down at the corner. I just like to present okay. that. Thank, Thank you for sir, that. Sir, is what you just said basically reflected in the document that you handed up as well? Yes, it is. So that the one that was given to the planning staff can be made part of the record? Yes. And then, it, and then if should the applicant's attorney wish to review it and comment on it, he'd have an opportunity to do yes, that. Yes, the MLS he's not, number. Since he's not here now. The oh. MLS number on the public record is 2843453. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard on this matter? Okay. 
pursuant to the request of council for Laura Park, do we have a motion to recess this until January 10th for and the last, I, for the final time? Yes, I agree. In the matter of number 818, map of Laura Park, I move that we recess the public hearing to the January 10th 2018 meeting of the planning board second all those in favor aye. Aye. aye opposed motion carries the item is recessed the next item on the agenda is a final subdivision uh two lot subdivision on angelo's plat in st james <clears throat> the applicant requests final approval to subdivide a one acre parcel into two single family lots. The final map of number 1176, map of Angelos Platt, is comprised of one tax lot that is rectangular in shape. There is an existing dwelling on the property that will be removed. The applicant proposes to construct two new dwellings. The site has 100 feet of frontage on Hobson Avenue and 55 feet of frontage on Heidi Court. The site is zoned R21. Land north of the site is zoned R10 and developed with single family dwellings. Land to the south, east, and west is zoned R21 and developed with single family dwellings. Topography is largely level. Elevation ranges from 131 feet to 133 feet above sea level. The depth of groundwater is greater than 10 feet and no problems are anticipated with regard to other environmental conditions. The proposal appears to comply with the standard, standards of the Suffolk County Sanitary Code with respect to sewage flow and septic system design and location requirements. The proposed subdivision meets all of the zoning requirements for the R21 zoning district with the exception of lot area for lot one. Lot one will require a variance from the planning board to reduce <coughs> the minimum lot area from 21,780 square feet to 20,280 square feet. Lot one would have met the lot area requirement, but the applicant is offering to dedicate fi a 15 foot wide strip along Hobson Avenue to the town for ro road widening purposes. The planning board has the authority to grant such a variance pursuant to section 322-3.4 of the zoning ordinance. And the planning department recommends approval for the following reasons. One, the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. There will be no difference in appearance from the street, and the minimal reduction will not be visible to any of the surrounding properties. Two, the benefit sought by the applicant can be achieved without obtaining an area variance if the applicant does not offer dedication of land for road widening purposes. This would give the applicant the adequate lot area to meet the zoning district requirement. However, the Hobson Avenue right-of-way ranges from 20 feet to 35 feet wide in front of this, this property whereas the standard right-of-way width for the residential street is 50 feet. The proposed dedication benefits the public by facilitating future road widening. The benefit to the public outweighs the minimal reduction in lot area. Three, the variance is not substantial in that the proposed lot area is only 6% less than the zoning requires. Four, the variance would not create an adverse effect on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. <coughs> Pursuant to Section 248-31B2 of the subdivision regulations, this subdivision is required to be clustered because the soil on the property is classified as haven loam, a prime agricultural soil. Example of clusters that would be feasible on the site include one construction two homes with 50 foot frontage each on Hobson Avenue and preserving the east half of the property. Two, constructing a two family dwelling. Three, preserving land in the rear yards of the proposed dwellings with a conservation easement. The first two options would represent a change in the character of the neighborhood. However, creating a conservation easement in the rear yards of the properties would achieve the goal of preserving prime agricultural soil and would not change the character of the neighborhood. In order to comply with Section 248-31 of the subdivision regulations, the Planning Department recommends that a 50-foot wide conservation easement be placed along the common property line with 25 feet on Lot 1 and 25 feet on Lot 2. Structures except fences should not be permitted in this area. However, the property owners would be allowed to mow, landscape, and maintain the area. Hobson Avenue and Heidi Court are identified as residential access streets. There are no sidewalks on Hobson Avenue and Heidi Court, and it's unlikely that sidewalks will be necessary given the low traffic volume. Therefore, the Planning Department recommends the Planning Board waive the requirement of sidewalks on Hobson Avenue and Heidi Court. Chapter 248-24 of the subdivision regulations state that each subdivision is required to show a park area of at least two acres per 100 buildings. However, the Court of Appeals has ruled that the town cannot require the reservation of park area unless the planning board determines on a case-by-case -case basis that a need for park land exists with respect to the individual subdivision. Based on the community facility study in the town con town's comprehensive plan, there is a need for park land in the neighborhood in which this subdivision is situated. This subdivision's share of meeting the need is approximately 0 .006 acres. 
In cases where the planning board determines that a suitable park cannot be located or is otherwise not practical, the subdivider is required to pay a cash equivalent prior to filing the map. Given the location and small size of the subdivision, a dedication for park space would not be practical. Therefore, the payment of an equivalent park fee established at $3,000 is recommended as a condition of final plat approval. The Engineering Department, Highway Department, and Traffic Safety Department have found the subdivision acceptable. The Department of Environment and Waterways finds the tree preservation and land clearing plan acceptable. They recommend a secret negative declaration as well as conditions for approval. Further, one, letters assuring availability of utility service have been received from the St. James Water District and PSCG. Two, the Smithtown Central School District has acknowledged a subdivision. Three, the amount of the inspection fee is estimated at $997. Four, the amount of the park fee is estimated at $3,000. Five, the amount of the performance bond is estimated at $12,462. Six, the amount of the cash deposit is estimated at $1,000. Seven, the amount of the performance bond to be posted is $11,462. The following resolution is recommended for number 1176, Map of Angelos Platt, <coughs> from the Department of Environment and Waterways, pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Planning Board Resolution Number Blank 2017, Recommended Secret rec Declaration, number 1176, Map of Angelos Platt. Whereas the Planning Board has considered the secret recommendation from the Department of Environment and Waterways, now therefore be it first resolved that the Planning Board, after due study and deliberation of the subject record, issues a secret negative declaration, determination of non-significance, the EIS is not necessary, in the matter of the application for subdivision approval by Matthew Angelos for Angelos Platt, number 1176, for the following reasons. A, the proposal does not appear to significantly threaten any unique or highly valuable environmental or cultural resources as identified in or regulated by the Environmental Conservation Law of the State of New York or Smithtown Town Code. B, the parcel does not appear to suffer from any severe environmental development constraints, no poor soils, no poor soil properties, no high groundwater, and no unmanageable slopes. C, the small size and nature of the proposal mitigate against a significant adverse impact upon the environment. <coughs> D, the proposal appears to be consistent with the planned use of the parcel and compatible with neighboring land uses. E, the project as proposed on the tree preservation and land clearing plan prepared by Frank S. Farantello, licensed professional surveyor, and dated October 3rd, 2017, provides for the retention of a significant amount of existing trees and natural vegetation upon development of the subject parcel. Such preservation shall be ensured by the placement of snow fencing mesh, construction fencing along all limits of clearing and around any individual trees to be preserved within clearing areas. This shall be done to the satisfaction of the Environmental Protection Director, and said fencing shall be maintained in place by the applicant until the completion of all land clearing and grading activities of the subject parcel. The Planning Department recommends approval and offers the following resolutions for the Board's consideration. Planning Board Resolution Number Blank 2017, Final Plat Variance for Number 1176, Map of Angelos Plat. Whereas the Planning Board has considered the request of Matthew Angelos for the following variance on Lot 1, pursuant to Section 322-30.4 of the Building Zone Ordinance of the Code of the Town of Smithtown for the subdivision known as Number 1176, Map of Angelos Plat. Now therefore be it first resolved. That the Planning Board of the Town of Smithtown hereby grants a variance from the Building Zone Ordinance of the Code of the Town of Smithtown for the subdivision known as Number 1176, Map of Angelos Platt, as follow. Below is the table to be put on the map. This table shall be shown on the final map to be filed in the Office of the Suffolk County Clerk. A fee of $500 is required for this variance. <coughs> Planning Board Resolution Number Blank 2017, Subdivision Final Approval Number 1176, Map of Angelos Platt. Whereas the Planning Board has considered the request of Matthew Angelos to subdivide one acre into two lots, now therefore be it first resolved that the final plat of number 1176 map of Angelos plat is hereby approved subject to the following conditions. A, posting of a performance bond in the amount specified by a separate resolution of the Planning Board and for a term of two years. B, posting of a general liability insurance policy to run concurrently with the term of the performance bond and in accordance with other provisions of Section 248 of the Code of the Town of Smithtown Subdivision Regulations. C, payment of an inspection fee and cash deposit as established by a separate resolution of the Planning Board. D, payment of an inspection, or D, payment of a park fee of $3,000. E, final approval of the drainage and regrading plans to the satisfaction of the town engineer. F, a 50-foot wide conservation easement shall be established along the common property line with 25 feet on lot one and 25 feet on lot two. No structure shall be permitted in this area except fences. However, the property owners will be allowed to mow, landscape, and maintain the area. G, prior to the commencement of construction activities at the subject parcel, 
including land clearing or other site preparation work, the applicant shall abide by the following conditions. One, all limits of clearing in any individual trees to be preserved within clear clearing areas must be marked with snow fencing or orange mesh construction fencing. <coughs> said fencing shall be located no closer to the trunk of any tree to be preserved than the drip line of said tree. This area to be preserved shall be as indicated in the tree preservation and land clearing plan prepared by Frank S. Farantello, licensed professional surveyor dated October 3rd, 2017. Two, upon completion of the installation of fencing as required above, the applicant shall provide written notice to the Department of Environment and Waterways requesting inspection of the limits of clearing as marked in the field by sited fencing. Three, the applicant shall not commence construction activities including land clearing or other site preparation work until the marked limits of clearing are approved in writing by the Environmental Protection Director. And four, the snow fencing or orange mesh construction fencing used to delineate the limits of clearing shall be maintained in place by the applicant until the completion of all land clearing and grading activities at the subject parcel. Second resolve that the chairman of the planning board is hereby authorized to sign the final plat, thereby approving said plat after the town board has accepted a performance bond of satisfactory form and amount. Third resolve that the conditional final approval of said final plat shall expire 180 days after the date of this resolution and within 62 days after the chairman of the planning board signs the final maps of this plat, unless said plat shall have been duly filed or recorded by the owner in the office of the Suffolk County Clerk. Planning Board Resolution Number Blank 2017, Authorization to Sign Performance Bond Estimate Number 1176, Map of Angelos Platt. Whereas the Town Departments of Engineering, Traffic Safety, Highway, and Planning have prepared a performance bond estimate to cover the cost of all required public improvements. Now, therefore, be it first resolved that the Chairman of the Planning Board is authorized to sign the performance bond estimate for Number 1176, Map of Angelos Platt the amount of $12,462 and establish an inspection fee of $997 and a cash deposit of $1,000. Therefore, the amount of the performance bond to be posted with the town shall be $11,462. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Vincent Tremarco. I represent the applicant. I've submitted the affidavit of posting to uh, Mr. Collado. Uh, referring to the recommendations of the uh, uh, planning department, um, the, the first question that I have, well, it's uh, kind of a general question or a statement. For the last 40 years, we've never, this planning board and, and its uh, uh, predecessors, never enforced the cluster um, ordinance in the town with these small subdivisions. Uh, Mr. Flynn uh, found uh, <laughs> the cluster ordinance. We didn't even know about it with respect to these small lots, but it is what it is, and I know the planning board uh, follows the law. However, the suggestion that uh, the planning department has to restrict 25 feet off the rear yard of each side of this two lot subdivision, in other words, the middle boundary line between the two lots, they want 25 feet to be restricted. Um, well, basically you can't do anything. And what's the reason? We have agricultural soil. The whole Long Island is agricultural soil. We all know that. Um, but rather than uh, make more of a big deal out of this uh, than it should be, this board has the power to cluster and state in, in its decision, well, we're not going to have 25 feet on each side. We have another alternative. You could actually have... 10,000, uh, 1,000 square feet, 500 square feet, as long as you comply. I know that uh, Mr. Flynn's working on a new ordinance uh, with respect to this technicality. Whenever that happens, that'll be great. So the first thing I'd like to do is submit um, a map, a traceover map that I did as um, um, unprofessional as it is, I think we'll give the board some idea of what we propose as an alternative. Remembering that you could do whatever you want with respect to the amount of land uh, that you uh, 
preserved for agricultural purposes. Bearing in mind that we're not going to be planting yes. on any uh, any of these fossils. So I've submitted two um, to Mr. Marchese, which hopefully um, just for your perusal, what we suggest as an alternative to nothing, um, which I know this board is not going to do, is five feet along the entire uh, perimeter of the three sides of each lot except for the front, um, the front uh, boundary line. If you look at the little legend I made at the top, uh, what planning suggests um, comprises about 5,000 square feet, um, 25 feet by 100 feet on the back end of each lot would be uh, 2,500 times two would be 5,000. What I suggest uh, actually is 5,206 square feet we would get the same result. We're saving dirt. We can save dirt anywhere. It really doesn't matter. We're not talking about trees, mature trees. All we're talking about is uh, some quirk in the law uh, that says, okay, uh, if you have agricultural soil, uh, you ought to try and preserve it. Preserve it for what I don't know, but again, the board has the power um, uh, to um, um, do whatever it wants with respect to the amount of um, uh, preservation it would like. And if you think about it, you know, what are we going to do? It's dirt. It's not even trees uh, that you're saving. It would uh, eliminate um, that incursion of 25 feet to each um, parcel's backyard, which to me doesn't make any sense. So our request is if the board is going to do anything, uh, to use our proposal, it's a little bit more square footage, and it does the same thing. It saves agricultural soil. I think the other way is more of a, of a punishment um, than an actual um, uh, preservation. We use our backyards more than, obviously, we use our side yards. So to save the uh, dirt on the side yards and five feet of the rear yard obtains the same result. Um, and that's preservation of so-called agricultural soils. Now, the second thing I'd like to uh, bring out to the board is, um, at the end, I think it's p the last page, yeah, um, we're giving uh, the town 15 feet on Hobson Avenue. Why? So that Hobson Avenue can be widened. That's fine. We're giving that, and then we need a variance because if we didn't give it, we wouldn't need a variance, but we're giving it. So now the board is now charging us $500 for the variance, which we shouldn't have to do in the first place. The board has the power to waive that. So I'm asking the board respectfully uh, to waive the 500 We didn't really have to give the uh, the 15 feet, although I believe the board has the power to say we want a dedication uh, of 15 feet, we're willing to do it, but then to charge us the 500 seems to be a little bit uh, onerous. So, uh, and I know that's the board, uh, the planning department's suggestion, not the board's at this point. So, those are the only two uh, objections I have. Uh, other than that, the uh, two lots uh, conform in every other way uh, with um, uh, the uh, R21 zoning. As I said, we lost um, uh, the uh, 15 by 1,500 square feet, which if you put it on the 20,280, we get another 21,780 and comply with the ordinance. So. Um, Again, we asked the board, other than those two um, suggestions that we have, uh, we have no objection to the planning department's suggestions. So just so we could be clear, with respect to the, the buffer area in the back, instead of 25 feet in the back of each lot, you're proposing five feet 
along the back and the sides of each lot? Yes. And as far as the, uh, the fee is concerned, you're saying that because you're dedicating 15 feet to the town, you now need a variance only because you're dedicating that yes, 15 absolutely. feet, and then you're being charged $500 for the variance that you're getting because you're giving the property to the town. Exactly. Okay. This is not the first back-to-back -back subdivision that I voted on, and it's just the first time that I see that uh, there's some type of easement involved. Um, there's no trees where this is now. In fact, there's a house that's to be demolished. So we're not preserving any trees or anything, just that's correct. ground. Now, on the other hand, your proposal is very creative. I think it's designed <laughs> to circumvent uh, the, the law. But Mr. Flint, where are we standing as far as uh, seeking amendment to this? Uh, Mr. Tomarco mentioned that you were in the process of working on something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're, I've worked on a draft. Um, I spoke with different town board members, and they suggested that I wait until the new town board takes office in 2018 before proceeding. So that's only two weeks? At this point, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Would you be willing, you know, to wait? I, I don't see the necessary or the need for an, e an easement, and I think we're just complying with a law that maybe that was not the legislative intent to begin with. Uh, so, Well, I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think my client wants to get on with uh, the um, approval process, which um, theoretically, if we had agreed with the planning department, maybe the board uh, would have voted on it. Um, if you think about it, our proposal is really the same as the planning department's proposal because they want to serve agri save agricultural soil. We're doing that. So what's the difference? And it makes for a much better situation for the buyers of these two lots because they're going to have another 20 feet of backyard, and that's where everybody plays, in their backyard. I mean, I agree with the, with the concerns. Uh, I also agree with the fee and... and and the uh, the easement but you know the, the rear yard having the, the the restriction i mean giving up the five feet around a fence you can't really do five feet you can't really do anything within five feet of your property line anyway so it's, i don't really see the offset but i agree with that you know i don't know if we have to wait until january you know for for any sort of change to to get that in play well yeah. mr flynn uh, can we can i just ask you um obviously it's the department's recommendation to have the 25 feet uh restriction in the back of each lot. Is the reason for that solely to comply with the law, or is there any other reason why you would want that Because you, be you could still, uh, I mean, according to this, I mean, you could mow it, lawn it, yes, you yeah. can do whatever, I yeah, mean, you can treat it as a backyard. We have, so. we have no objection to the alternative. We didn't know about it. We just, we just recommended the 20 feet, or 25, 25 feet as so can, As an example, sure. That? We can override that? Oh, of course. You can, we, obviously, you can override whatever. I, I, think he, I think he just said he, they don't have an objection yeah. to doing it the way I'm the applicant wants. I'm in to the original way without any, any, um, any five feet around the perimeter and well, without the 25 feet. That, I feet think, here. would not be in compliance yeah, with the code. Yeah, that would go with I think the, feet around. I think the law requires the square feet footage. So we can't override it. Okay, that's what I asked. Sorry. I misunderstood. Sorry. You can override our recommendation. Gotcha. But I don't think you can override the code. Okay. So Mr. Tremarco's <clears throat> alternative, if we were aware of it, we probably would have recommended it. So the square we, were we has aware to be of it? Right. Yes. Were we aware of it? No, I just way. thought of it oh, as a bad okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so what, what do we have to do to adopt his Do we need to rewrite this resolution? Well, excuse me, before we even do it, I just had a, um, an idea, if this is possible. Um, if we did do that, if we did do the five feet suggested by Mr. Tremarco around the perimeter, when, if and when the law is changed, does the client, have, the applicant have the option of, um, of re, uh, bringing that issue back up again? In yeah, the, that, it's, a, it's a good question. I was thinking about that. Um, and if I could answer it in two parts. Number one, just because in January there will be a new town board and the idea of an amendment will be considered, like it, it may be quite a few weeks or months till they actually sure. do something, yeah. and they might not do it. So just because it's everyone a process, 
Yeah, and just because the people in this room seem to think that the existing requirement is uh, irrelevant at this point in time on a piece of property like this, I don't want to second guess the town board. They might think it's important. Maybe they don't agree. Um, so if I were the applicant and I were in a hurry, I might feel pressured to do something tonight as opposed to wait. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is, is let's th say they feel like they need to do something tonight. Um, I, th I think I'd have to ask Paul. I think as long as the map isn't filed, mm -hmm. they can come back with a hearing and request an amendment of the uh, conditions of approval. Okay. You'd have to make the motion at the conclusion of the hearing and then vote on the motion on a standalone basis. If that motion language were to be adopted, then it would become part of the resolution prior to a final vote on the entire resolution. All right. I, Mr. Chairman, I think I can put into words or maybe Mr. Earhart could, uh, F would be a five foot wide conservation easement shall be established along the uh, three boundary lines of the subject lots, uh, excluding uh, the front boundary line of each lot. And then no structures shall be permitted in the area Except fences, however, the property owners will be allowed to mow, landscape, and maintain the area. And we're done. Or you, or you could also say it's the resolution as read says uh, instead of a 50 foot wide conservation easement shall be established along the common property line, that would be a 10 foot with five on each side and then five on the rear. On the side of each right. lot, you could do that. Same yes. result, Probably right? Easier, better. If I could just interject, I mean, my, my experience in drafting legislation is that uh, minor verbal amendments, um, you know, can be done with a reasonable degree of accommodation because people understand what the changes actually are. But when you're looking at a three-page resolution and you start to get into uh, multiple sentences and um, you know, run-on thoughts, I think it's a little bit safer to have some written proposals submitted first, you know, have it reviewed by both the planning um, department and myself, and then you know, get a comfort level that the language is precise and it's not contradicting On the fly is you know. always more risky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Basically, what you're saying. Postpone it to yeah. well, January 10th, uh, they get their thing, and uh, yeah. we move on. I'm not 100% certain that I know that I know what the final amendment is now, if that's going to be the language. You got well, back the, and forth. The amendment is that he yeah. wants five feet along the back of each lot and five feet along the side of each lot. Except in the front. Except in the front. Well, I said the back and the side. Right. That's what he wants. Instead of 25 feet on the back of each lot, he wants five feet along the back of each lot and five feet along the so both sides of each lot. That's what he wants. But I understand the your concern the same. that when you're, when you're doing things on the fly, it's not as precise. Yeah. A little bit dangerous. I mean, these, these these are land use is a serious matter, and your know, words make a difference. Words have meaning, and uh, and again, I mean, it's it's. I know it's like a stream of consciousness thought. It's not like he came over with a written proposal, you know, bracketing out the language you want to delete, underlining the language you want to add. That's the way you normally do revisions to legislation. I will admit that you know, in my 40 years, we've had verbal amendments done on my watch, but we were talking about replacing a word or two, which everybody understood without any ambiguity. I, I think something like this, the burden's on the applicant to propose um, and submit the language that he or she wants to see and let it go through a review process. So, so. I would agree with that. Me too. I don't agree with it, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have Paul here. <laughs> um, it's one simple paragraph I don't know how we can make a mistake, but the board is the board, so, uh, you know, I... Well, we have to listen to council. Is, the alternative is we take a shot at it now, and as council says, and I tend to agree with them, that on the fly is always risky, although it is quite a, so, somewhat of a simple thing, or the precise wording gets put into a revised memo that we read entirely, or just to change part into the record the next meeting, and it's very clear. I guess I... Have to agree with that. I don't know. <laughs> well, could you please forward your thoughts in writing as to how you would 
Uh, I'll do it, yes, and I'll send it to... Uh, All you have to do is reword that one paragraph, no, and then I, they can amend I, the memo no. and put your, that language to that right. you and they agree to it into the new memo, and then hopefully it will be it. voted on in January. Do we also, um, what do we do about, do we address the $500 fee. fee for the variance tonight? I would like to address that, uh, I, e either side, either this meeting or the January 10th meeting, or do we put that in, take that out? If we're going to revise the memo, can we just take that out? How do we? Uh, My suggestion is consult with counsel, your counsel, whether you okay. have the right to waive the fee. And then, you know what? Since, we, since it looks like it's going to be adjourned for the language of the restriction anyway, mm -hmm. perhaps we could not do either of these things now. And then between now and the next meeting, we can consult with counsel as to whether we have the right to waive the fee and then go from there. I don't know, just thinking out loud. Sure. Not only does that make sense, there's also the issue of you, you got to do this thing sequentially because the variance is um, going to be the second step along the way because it's one of the conditions in order to get to the merits of the um, underlying application. So in all honesty, even if you didn't you know, have clarity on whether or not you can waive it, you really have to wait so they're all in alignment for the final vote. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. January 10th? <laughs> January 10th. Busy night. Motion? motion to recess. Okay. In the matter of number 1176, map of Angelos Platt, I move that we recess the public hearing to the January 10th, 2018 meeting of the planning board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The item of the public hearing is recessed. Do we need to table all these resolutions? Um, do we need to table all these <coughs> resolutions? Um, do we need to table each one or can we make it a blanket? Table the resolutions. Should we table these resolutions? So yeah, you should, you should first you recess the hearing, then table right. resolutions. Yeah, but table I, all three, table, you know, three I can, motions, I can but combine three it. table and yeah, three. I can combine it or do each one separately? Yeah, yeah, each one separately, three separate tabling motions. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, Mr. DeCanio came in after you called um, from uh, Richard's Homes? Yeah, Richard yes. Holmes. Okay, let us proceed with this and then we'll, we'll, we'll go back to that. Oh, great. Thank we have to just table the resolutions and then we'll be done. Got a whole bunch of them. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. You just say same motion, same second, yeah. same vote. You have to okay. get past the first one. We just have three votes. That's the only point. Okay. So make a motion to table. Okay. In the matter of, of number 1176, one. Map of Angelo's Platt. I move that we table the, um, well, do I, should I mention the secret declaration? Secret declaration, yeah, the, the, the secret declaration um, um, uh, resolution, uh, we, that we um, table that motion until the January 10th, 2018 meeting of the planning board. Second to tabling the resolution to that date. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The in the, matter in the is tabled. In the matter of number 1176, Map of Angelos Platt, um, regarding the um, variance at table of modifications, I move that we uh, recess the, um, that we table the resolution to the January 10th, 2018 meeting of the Planning Board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The resolution is tabled. And in the map of the, in the, in the um, matter of the final approval, in the matter of number 1176, map of Angelo's Platt, I move that we table that motion to the January 10th, 2018 meeting of the Planning Board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The resolution is tabled. And in the matter of the performance bond estimate? Yep. Yep. In the matter of the performance bond estimate for 1176, map of Angelo's Platt, I move that we table the motion to the January 10th, 2018 meeting of the planning board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The matter's tabled. Uh, I understand that a applicant has present who wishes to be heard. Uh, I guess before before we uh, address that, do we have the uh, postings and everything is in order? Yes. Okay, so then I guess it would be appropriate to reconsider and lay these back on the table for uh, a vote. So in the matter of 1120 Richard's Home St. James, their motion to reconsider and so we can 
lay this on the table mm -hmm. for a vote. Uh, in the matter of number 1120, map of Richard's Holmes, um, I'm, is it reconsideration? Yeah, make I a motion to reconsider. I, I make the motion that we reconsider uh, the um, the uh, resolution for the um, uh, extension. Extension. Make a motion to uh, yeah reconsider recessing the. Could I yeah. ask you yes. first yeah. before you reopen this? Did you see anybody leave because it was recessed? Because if someone thought that you weren't going to hear it and they walked out of the room. And the room is empty now. We don't really know the answer to that question. Yeah. But I mean, did anybody notice someone get up and leave? When yes, I had the room emptied out. I meant no. when the board no, I recessed this. I didn't see anyone okay. leave. No. I was making a note of who, it, what, the, why they were here, and I didn't see anyone leave on on the, those two. Um, yeah, I think the only person that left was the attorney on the okay. on the first. Mm -hmm. Everybody else yeah. did. All right, so then motion to reconsider is in order, and uh, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, 1120 bond extension is back on the table, and as well as public improvements, the, the second one. Oh, well, we could address that uh, separately. Address the bond first. Could we could read the memo. The request is to retroactively extend the performance period of the performance bond for the subdivision known as number 1120 map of Richards Homes for a period of two years to expire on January 22nd, 2019. The applicant received conditional final approval for this two lot subdivision from the planning board on November 5th, 2008. A performance bond estimate in the amount of $22,925 was approved by the board and subsequently signed by the chairman. The town board accepted the bond on January 22nd, 2009. <clears throat> the approved performance period of the performance bond expired on January 22nd, 2017. The applicant, in indicated, the applicant has indicated that they need more time in order to complete the necessary improvements on the bond. One house has been completed and the second house is under construction. The engineering and highway departments have no objection to the request. The traffic safety department has no comment. The planning department has no objection to the request. <clears throat> the planning department offers the following resolution for the board's consideration. Planning Board Resolution Number <coughs> Blank 2017, Extension of Performance Period of the Performance Bond for Number 1120, Map of Richards Homes, whereas the Planning Board has considered the request of the Canio Management Court to retroactively extend the performance period of the performance bond for Number 1120, Map of Richards Homes for a period of two years. Now, therefore, be it first resolved that the Planning Board hereby approves a retroactive extension of the performance period of the performance bond for the subdivision known as Number 1120, Map of Richards Homes, for a period of two years to expire on January 22nd, 2019. Yes, <clears throat> Vincent DeCanio. I'd like to apologize to the board. I was here on time. I went to the senior citizen building, been going there for 15 years, and I noticed even on the application for Magnus and the planning board, it never said that this is where the new hearings are being held. So I apologize okay. to the board, and thanks for hearing me tonight. I think the two requests are uh, nominal in nature. We're just asking for an extension. We have a cash bond up. As soon as the weather breaks, we'll put the monuments in and the work will be completed. And as far as uh, waving of the sidewalks, there isn't any sidewalks throughout the entire grid pattern, nor is there on Lieutenant Olson. So I would appreciate if the board could Okay, you've heard the report that. of the planning department and you are in agreement? I'm in full agreement, okay. yes, thank you. Do we have a motion now to close the public hearing? And the matter of number 1120, map of Richard's Homes, I move that we close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The public hearing is closed and on the resolution for the extension. In the matter of number 1120, map of Richard's Homes, I move that we adopt the resolution as read in accordance with the recommendation of the planning department. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution is adopted on uh, Rich on the waiver request for the sidewalks. A uh, motion by myself to reconsider action on the sidewalk waiver request. So, to the order, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> the item is back on the table. The applicant requests to waive 85 feet of sidewalk within the subdivision known as number 1120 Map of Richards Homes. The applicant received conditional final approval for this two-lot subdivision from the planning board on November 5, 2008. The applicant was bonded for 85 feet of sidewalk on Cambon Avenue. The applicant indicates that there are no sidewalks in the surrounding neighborhood. 
The engineering and highway departments have no objection to the request. The traffic safety department has no comment. The planning department has no objection to the request for the following reasons. One, Cambon Avenue is a residential access street and has been identified by the planning department as a street that does not need sidewalks due to the low traffic volume. Two, there are no sidewalks on Cambon Avenue or any of the surrounding residential streets in the neighborhood. The planning department offers the following resolution for the board's consideration. Planning board resolution number blank 2017, waiver request of the public improvements for number 1120 map of Richard's homes. Whereas the planning board has considered the request of the Canio Management Corp to waive 85 feet of sidewalk on Cambon Avenue within the subdivision known as number 1120 map of Richard's homes. Now therefore be it first resolved, the planning board hereby approves the request of the Canio Management Corp to waive 85 feet of sidewalk along Cambon Avenue within the subdivision known as number 1120 map of Richard's homes for the following reasons. One, Cambon Avenue is a residential access street and has been identified by the planning department as a street that does not need sidewalks due to the low traffic volume. Two, there are no sidewalks on Cambon Avenue or any of the surrounding residential streets in the neighborhood. You heard the report of the planning department. Are you in agreement? I'm in agreement, yes. Okay. Any questions? Any, is there a motion to close the public hearing? In the matter of number 1120, Map of Richard's Homes, and move that we close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Public hearing is closed. And on the resolution itself? In the matter of number 1120, Map of Richard's Homes, I move that we adopt the resolution as read in accordance with the recommendation of the Planning Department. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution is adopted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you, Board. I Thank apologize you. again. No problem. Happy holidays. Thank you. Okay, now at this point, I'm going to make a motion that the, the planning board. Uh, you want to do the minutes real quick, November 1st? You want to do the. Okay, we'll. It's we'll, up to you. Yes. I just wasn't sure. Sure. Yes, Go ahead. Uh, I move that we adopt the minutes of the November 1st, 2017 meeting of this board. Seconded by myself. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The minutes of November 1 are adopted. At this time, uh, we, the board is going to move into executive session, and I'm going to make a motion uh, that for discussion of litigation regarding Foxwood Estates. Council want to further elaborate on the motion? Yeah, the motion should be to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing um, the Foxwood uh, Estates litigation against the uh, planning board and approving the presence of uh, Dave Flynn from planning, Matt Collada from planning, myself, Paul Sabatino II, and my litigation co-counsel, uh, Anton J. Borovina. Um, and then we just need to be able to cut off the mics or go into another room. So we'll come back out afterwards and okay. go back on the record so the um, stenographer will have to stay till the conclusion of that. Then. That's fine. I saw so a vote and a, I saw a second. Can I have a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we stay in the executive session. We don't mention the case. We're okay, not mentioning so the case. It's not anybody's okay. business. Right. Okay. So. All right. We're back in session. Uh, Ooh, the board has given a chance to <laughs> battery oh, time. Equipment. My, my, I, you I took it. You had a nice break. I mean, me. come on. You didn't hear me. My computer went dead. <laughs> the battery died. It did. It was on so long. What is what is banana? Say that again. What? Banana. The banana people build absolutely nothing anywhere near anybody. I love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> it's good, right? It's true. It's true. Ba -ba -boom. I love it. I think it's great. It's, yeah, there's a lot of banana people I know. Uh, that's a new legal document. Right? Yeah, okay. I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it early and often. That's correct. All right. The uh, board has met okay. with our attorneys regarding the litigation. Right. And is that right? Uh, is that right? I didn't give it a high sign. I hope we're not on television. Sure. They'll cut that part in. Okay, we're rolling. Make, so. well, do it. The uh, court reporters. Oh, he's not ready yet? We're, we're, we're waiting for yet. the court reporters. Can you put that on the cutting room floor? Tell me when you're ready. The, I'm ready. The computer okay. was warming it's up. It's back okay. on. Anytime, Mr. Chairman. Can you you're cut ready. it off and put it back on again? <laughs> Take two. Okay, the board has concluded its executive session with council regarding the uh, matter of fo regarding Foxwood, 
and uh, has given our attorneys instructions. At this moment, uh, I believe it's appropriate to wish everyone a happy holiday season, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. Just note the time for the record that we came back at 1036. Uh, 1036 is on the record okay. right now. I second the motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned at 1036.